He is the PHWA chapter chair. He plays a very vital role in our fantasy baseball league, and he joins us. Hi, guys. Hi, Patrick. Live from, the, live from the streets. Live from the streets? You are on the street. It's PJ on the street, and I like it. I like it. Uh, PJ, the Masterton votes, or not votes, but Masterton nominees came out. The Vancouver chair, we selected yeah. Noah yeah. Juleson. Uh, tell us about the Masterton, what it means, and why we went with Noah Juleson. Sportsmanship, sportsmanship, dedication to hockey, perseverance. Um, those are sort of the three main items been handing out since 1968. A lot of people asking, why not Brock Besser? I'm like, well, we nominated him last year. Um, but in general, it's, it's an award that's not meant to be a comeback player of the year award, but it often seems to end up being like that. Um, but it's just meant to sort of recognize the guy that's, I guess, worked the hardest, done the best to sort of be the guy that people want him to be that year to be what we want hockey players to be. And I think it's hard to argue that Noel Juleson isn't, hasn't been that guy this year. I mean, all, we've all dealt with him top five, sort of top five guy in terms of just talking, some of the catch up with, talk about the game, but also just the work he's put in. I think that's what, what stood out to most people, just the work he's put in this season, trying to become a full-time regular NHL defenseman. I mean, he was drafted nine years ago, uh, made his debut at the age of 20, but it's taken him six years really to be a regular full-time NHLer. And here we are. Yeah, and a devastating eye injury as well that threatened his career mixed in there. It's a phenomenal story for Juleson. Uh, shifting gears to looking ahead to the playoffs a little bit, besides Pedersen, and I'll also exclude Demko and Lindholm from the conversation since they're a bit obvious as well, which Canuck player do you think is the biggest wild card or X factor for the Canucks in the playoffs in terms of we really need this guy playing at his best, and if he's at his best, that'll give us big boost in the first round i mean i think it's got to be dakota joshua isn't it? i mean it's the guy we've all been talking about um been interesting seeing him play with miller uh the last couple games him and garland i mean i personally i think you kind of actually got to i think they should go back to besser with miller but i understand the idea what they're trying to go with there basically taking the two the, the two the two wingers who've been the most outside of Besser, i would say who've been the most consistent the most impactful this season and and putting them with a guy that's i think i mean really seems like always ready to play whether he thinks he's playing well or not it you know has that fire has that edge and i think joshua is an interesting player to put next to him because of his physical nature because of the way he's come to understand how he brings energy to the table um yeah i think it's dakota joshua PJ, six games left for the Canucks before the playoffs. What's the number one thing you're looking for over these final six games? Oh, I mean, <laughs> to steal the line from Rick Taka, getting inside. You know, I mean, this is a team that's been playing well defensively on the year, has played well defensively, fifth fewest goals against in the whole league. Uh, I wrote about this a little bit about this yesterday. It's about getting the puck into the good spots on offense and. You know, maybe maybe they never were. You know, there have been a lot of long bong shots all season, but you know, they were finding results on the inside. Maybe some of that was about luck, but I, I think on the whole, they need to find a way to get. It's not just sort of fixing that power play. They have scored power play goals in three straight games, right? Like, don't ignore that. Maybe ugly, but they've got it done. Uh, but to me, it's the five on five offense creating a little more. Uh, you know, I know they're kind of set in stone on what they're going to be, but they still got to find a way to get a little more, get on that doorstep, get a few more greasy goals. PJ, I remember having conversations with you earlier this season about the impact Rick Tockett has had, the buying mm -hmm. that he's been able to generate, and how despite Tockett and you know Travis Green are so similar and so close that they've had, had profoundly different impacts as, as head coaches here. When you examine big picture, the impact Tockett has had this season, particularly defensively and just getting a buy-in from this, this core group of players, what stands out to you about why he's been successful with this group? I think it's I think it's the idea of him being able to connect with the players, right? Like Travis Green was kind of a player's coach. He he tried to put himself as a guy who like was there to protect his guys, make um but on the whole, I think it's very clear to me that Tockett has just done a better job of that, right? Like he's just been better at connecting with his players, we hear so much about the vibe in the room. Noel Jolson, a great example of a person I talked to about this the other day. You know, he just said, you know, everyone's, everyone feels comfortable speaking their mind. They're all speaking the same language. I think they've been handed 
sort of communication tools by the coach that are more than just kind of the cliches. I used to think back to when we were covering the team with green and, you know, you, you go in the locker room after the game and you hear some talking points and you, you know that that's what Travis was going to talk about post game. And you knew that he had walked in and told the guys, this is the highlights of the game. This is what matters. And we know Tuck's approach is just a little bit different. He's more hands off. He's more sort of wants the players to come to him. But that's not a thing you can just make happen. You have you have to like actually like empower them. You have to give them ideas. You have to give them things to think about. And and I think Toggett has been so highly effective in that. He's well. He's studied a lot about communication. He and I have talked about that. I mean, I wrote a story about him um, uh, just after Christmas in, in January, just talking about the the way he communicates and the way he empowers players and the way he has a, a different approach with different players. He knows that he, you know, a guy like Nikita Zadorov, and Zadorov's talked about this, he wants to be barked at a little bit, right? There's other guys that are not going to react the same way. I mean, that's human nature. We think, let's think all back to the teachers that we liked and the teachers we appreciated. We're all going to have different takeaways, right? Like the way we responded in class or whatever it was or the people that have mattered in our lives. The way there's certain people that fit for certain, for, for, for certain of us in different ways. And being, you know, the master coach, the master leader is the one who understands how to do all those different things in different ways. And he clearly has a, a perfect handle on all that. It, kind of in the same vein, we were talking about Quinn Hughes for the Norris, but what have you made of Quinn Hughes' evolution as a leader and the captain of this team? Well, I mean, he's a guy that in the end was always going to be about getting it done, you know, versus mm-hmm. saying things. I mean, there obviously there was that chatter going back to last year when we first started perceiving Hughes trying to step up a little bit more in the wake of Bo Hor- Horvat's departure, being the guy that was going to speak up a bit more as an advocate. Um, you know, and he's been effective at that. And I-, I think more than anything, the way he's been able to take the game on his sort of shoulders, the team on his shoulders, like look at Arizona, right? Like the Canucks weren't playing that great. They were playing well enough to win, but they still were struggling to create things in, <clears throat> in front of the net. And he just said in the third period, said, you know, this is going to happen and I'm going to do it. In a way that we saw him do so often at the beginning of the season, I think he kind of took his foot off the gas a little bit, but it, we're coming down to crunch time and he knows it needs to get done and he's getting it done. He's being the guy. And I think that more than anything, you know, taking on, I am going to be this team's best player. I'm going to make it happen. You know, it doesn't matter if anybody else is. I'm going to do it. That, to me, is what stood out the most for him so far this season. Ian McIntyre reported earlier in the week on the intermission broadcast that he wouldn't be surprised if the Canucks get a deal or two done uh, with a pending UFA or two before right. the end of the regular season. He also added Dakota Joshua is near the top of their list. Uh, what are you hearing around these types of conversations? Yeah, I mean, I, the, the, the Hronik story has been a tough one to read. Um Everyone playing very quiet on that. I mean, obviously, like, you know, Ian got the, the comment from him being, yeah, we'd love to do that. I mean, it was very similar to, to what I got from Rutherford a, a while back heading into the deadline. You know, that that was a factor in, the, in, in sort of how they're all doing this. I think we, we well heard the sort of numbers, the positions everybody have. I haven't heard anything different. Um, you know, I, I, Dakota Joshua, to me, given how well he's played the, the, the potential value there. Like if you can get him, I mean, in the end we were worried about re-signing a fourth line forward. Well, he's not a fourth line forward anymore, right? Like he's become an, an essential middle six winger. And if you can get a guy that's going to have an impact on say your second line or can play with Miller, but you're able to pay him like he's a third liner, like that's pretty good money, man. Like that's a good way 